what's up? My name is Taria and I am already having to re-record my very first video because I screwed up the first time and it won't transfer over to my phone. So, um, that's great. Hi, how are you? Um, this is the book contradictions tag and like I said, it's going to be my first video so I'm just going to jump right into it because I don't even know what else to say. Okay, so I'm going to link the original creator of this tag down below. Um, but I'm just going to start um, the first question and it is, I love this genre but I didn't like this book. And for that I'm going to say The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, maybe? Uh, I'll put a picture up right in this area of what the book cover looks like. It's a very beautiful book cover. Um, so I love this genre but I didn't like this book. So this book is basically a historical fiction which I love my top, um, my top genres are historical fictions, romances, and thrillers. Um, so I thought that, well actually to start off with, this book is kind of marketed more as a fantasy. If you just look at the cover you would think, okay that's a fantasy book, it's going to have to deal with potions and magic and things, but um, it'll tell you very explicitly in the book, it's not magic, it's like, it's natural stuff and it's like healing stuff that comes from the earth. Cool, we got it. There's not really a magical component in this book at all. So it's a historical fiction which I thought I would still like, but really it's boring. It's like half historical fiction, half contemporary. Um, I like the historical fiction stuff more, but it is slow. Um, I wish there was even more like intrigue and darkness. I mean, it does have to deal a lot with secrets and stuff, but I, I just wanted more from that. I guess I just wanted it to be expanded upon. And then the stuff that takes place in present day, um, I don't know, she just, she kind of just stumbles upon everything and she does eventually get somewhere where you're like, okay, whatever, I'm proud of you. But all in all, this book was just pretty slow, pretty boring, and I don't think delivered on what it promised to. Second question, I rarely read this genre, but I loved this book. I rarely read fantasies, but I read Piranesi and it was amazing. Basically, um, this book, you don't know what time period you're in, you don't know where you are, you're told you're in a labyrinth, but I mean that can mean anything. So you don't know what the labyrinth is, you don't know who the narrator is, the narrator truly like doesn't actually know a lot even though he thinks he does and it's not until you know one small question becomes a bigger question becomes a big you know and then he starts to question things and the mystery unravels and it is pretty mind-blowing it has a good amount of complexity to it um and I think that it's going to go somewhere that you, like the reader, isn't aware of. So if you were going to pick this up, um, I highly recommend it. I think that you'd really like it. Um, the only thing I would say is probably the, the first like 60, 70 pages or so are a little bit confusing. The writing style, you're like, okay, why is there randomly like capitalized words or, or capitalized letters? Um, I couldn't really figure that out either. I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna finish the book and it ended up picking up a lot for me and I loved it by the end. Um, so yeah, Piranesi, it's a great fantasy. The third question is, I love this trope but I didn't like this book. So I love the trope of fake dating and romances. I feel like it, something about people having to pretend to be in love and they actually get in love and especially if they started out hating each other and then they like each other, oh, I just love it. So I thought that I would love this because it's basically fake dating but like on crack because it's a fake engagement. But really this is more of like a second chance romance because the main character is really upset with the her, her childhood crush because he agreed to go to prom with her but then he bailed her, like bailed on prom. And so she holds it against him like 10 years later and so she keeps bringing it up and then everyone around is like, dude, how could you have like 
left arm that's the biggest deal in the world dude you're like the worst how could you have done that dude they're teenagers he's gonna do really shitty stuff but it's been 10 years since then i can understand the hurt feelings but it it's too much of a grudge that she was holding towards him that just made me feel like she was pretty petty um and then also i just felt like the book did not the best part, not the best job in making me feel like these two were really meant for each other. Like, two people who were good together, I guess, and they could make it work, but I didn't get those, like, butterflies from it. Question four is, I hate this trope, but I love this book. Honestly, I had a hard time figuring one out for this, but um, the closest thing that I could find was Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinbro. Um, and I guess what I didn't like is kind of the domestic thriller side of it. I don't love domestic thrillers. I feel like they are pretty formulaic, but I know that they are really big sellers. Um, this book starts off, it's like a girl who meets this guy at a bar and they make out, but then he leaves and so she goes to work the next day and turns out he's like her new boss. And he's married. So... You're sitting over here like, what the hell? But I swear to you, this book is going to go somewhere, like, toward the middle, where you're like, okay, that's weird. Okay, what are, what are, what are we doing? And then by the end, like, your mind's going to be blown. It goes some, somewhere that you just don't expect for it to go. And probably out of every domestic thriller, I don't know, I put this up there with, like, Gone Girl. It's really, really good. Just a, one of those really great, shocking twists and one of my favorite books so yeah i love this author but i didn't like this book i chose the maidens by alex michaelides um he did so good with the silent patient that one i just remember reading it and like coming out of my room and being like oh my god i have to talk to somebody about this and so i thought that i was going to get the same thing from this book because first of all it comes out great cover I'm already intrigued because I like Alex McLeodes and then it has a dark academia aspect so I'm like I'm amped up I'm like yo this is gonna be perfect and then it's just it ended up being so many red herrings you're like okay obviously this is not gonna happen because it's the same red herring happening over and over and over and over which is every guy that the protagonist comes across is like weird and stalkery but then like falls in love with her but um too many red herrings it you're like obviously this is not going to be what happens i can tell that you're trying to throw me off really hard and i just i i i fell out of it the protagonist wasn't interesting she didn't seem particularly strong she just made a lot of dumb decisions and i hate that in books as well whenever um the plot moves forward just because the main character is doing a bunch of dumb shit. So I dislike the book for that reason. The cover is great though. And I will probably read more from Alex Michaelides in the future. Um, question seven, I don't actually have an answer for. It's, I previously disliked a book by this author, but I loved this other book by this author. Um, usually when I dislike something from an author, especially if it's the first time I ever read from that author, I'll just stop reading from them altogether because I'm like, well, my time is precious. I know that I don't really vibe with your stuff, so I'm just gonna, you know, put it aside. Question number seven, which is, I love this cover, but I didn't like this book. And that was Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. And this is a beautiful cover. It has, like, this vintage vibe which the book does take does take place in the 1970s um so it has this uh like very vintagey look it's this girl with like this hair and sunglasses and like she's smoking a cigarette she just looks so fucking cool but honestly this book was really boring i thought something about it was going to be intriguing but at any point i just i felt like oh my god i'm so ready to dnf this book but I wanted to give it a shot because I loved Mexican Goddess. Yes, this one and uh, um, the question that I, the answer that I had to the, the previous question I answered could kind of go together. Even in the parts where there's supposed to be action, it just feels like it still moves very slow. And the last question is, I don't like the cover. No. Huh? 
It's I don't like this cover, but I loved this book. I loved the, the Kiss Quotient, but something about this cover just feels like I made it when I was 10. It's, I don't know, it's just kind of whack. It's, it's lame, it's corny, and I wish it was better, especially because this book is incredibly steamy, but I feel something about the cover makes it seem almost like something that a kid would pick up and you definitely don't want your kids reading this. I actually like to see this cover be redesigned especially because the other books in the series have really really good covers um, that I do feel like suit those books. Um, so I wish that this one would just be redone so that it fits a little bit better so I can buy the whole collection and they can all look beautiful together on my shelf. That's just what oh, I want. Yeah, I am done. I answered all of the questions. Um, thank you if you watched all the way to the end. Um, you can subscribe to my channel if you want to. I don't know how often I'll be putting up videos. I'm just doing this for fun. So, um, yeah, you can subscribe if you want to. Again, I'm going to link the original creator of the, of this tag down below. But, yeah, thank you. Bye.